So, <laughs> so here's the the problem. We have a maximization problem with two constraints, and we want to find the optimal solution for this maximization problem, and we want the solution to be integer. So our decision variables need to be integer. So as uh, we have some training class, we have only two decision variables, so for those cases you can use the graphical method to find an optimal solution. So what would be the first thing you would do? Graph those constraints to find the feasible read, right? So we have these two constraints. So I assume you know how to work with this already. Uh, to find that feasible region in a graphical method. So what you do is you find two points for each constraint and then you can draw that constraint. That's the first constraint. And same thing you get. Yes, so you have x2 here and x1 here. I assume you should get the same answer. Yeah, but why you decided to go that route? <laughs> I, I thought you've done it before, but I guess I don't. I don't think so. But that's okay. I mean, at the end, you should should be able to get the the same answer. So this is x two. Your y axis is x two. Let me put some numbers here. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes. And the video. So you will have access to the video as well. Okay. So this is... So you, you know how to draw this line, right? have to go through that. You, you make this equal to uh, zero, you find two points, and then draw the, the constraint. Then you perform the same same thing with the second constraint. You draw the second constraint, and then you find that your feasible region will be this right angle. So this constraint is not affecting your feasible region. This is a constraint that you can for this particular problem, you can ignore because it's not limiting your solution. Okay, so that's the physical region for this problem. Now, from this point, now you have to find that plane using your objective function that you will move that plane in order to see where the optimal solution is. That's one thing that you can try. You can also in this case, you only have three points, so you can also try to find what's the optimal solution for that case. So again, in this method, the first thing you're going to do is to find the optimal solution for the linear program model or the linear relaxation. Once you have that optimal solution, then you can start using the branch and bound method to find your interior solution. So in this case, the arrow or the direction for improvement or for increasing your objective function value is that direction. And if you move, move a plane in that direction, say this is perpendicular here, then you know that the optimal solution will be this point. Now, it will be hard to tell what's the number here. You know x2 is going to be equal to 0 because it is on the x1 axis. But still, you know this is a fractional value. In order to make things easier for you, I gave you the optimal solution. If you look at the 3, the optimal solution for the LP problem is already there. So, if you were so that would be the optimal solution, but the, the reason I gave you this is because I just wanted you to verify that you get the right answer. Okay, so if you found 
that point, then you can come here and verify that the optimal solution is the one that you got. So that point is that one. So the optimal solution is 91 over 3, x1, 13 over 3, and x2 equals 0. And that point, again, is here. Any questions up to this point? So you found the optimal solution for the linear relaxation. And let me just put it here. And that's your optimal solution. Okay, so now you're going to start using the branch and bound method to find the integer solution for this problem since we know that x1 is not an integer. Okay, so that's why we're going to use the branch and bound. So we start with the feasible region. We know the feasible region will be this triangle. And we know that 13 over 3 is a fractional value between 4 and 5. So, what do you do? You're going to add two new constraints <coughs> to your problem or to your feasible region in order to start finding that integer solution for your problem. So, in this case, I was basically guiding you with the constraint. So, you know, the first constraint is going to be x1 less than or equal to 4, and the second constraint was x1 greater or equal to 5. So, when you plug those constraints in your graph, this is how the constraints look. On the test, do you give it like a guide like that to mm, I, I don't know. I, I won't I don't think I would be. I mean this was because this was the first time you were okay. you're learning the method, mm -hmm. but I would I would expect you to base on the on the solution that you get to be able to identify the constraints that you need to have. Again, this is a fractional value between 4 and 5, so in order to make it integer, you need to add a constraint for 4 and for 5. If this was 2.5, then you add 2 and 3. Okay? So we have those two constraints here. So what happened now? We have two new two problems, one for this area and one for this area. If we look at this area first, are we able to find an optimal solution? So that problem is infeasible. Why is that? Because their <coughs> actual feasible region is not part of that area. So there's no solution. That makes that two problem infeasible. So this is SP3. And I'm going to call this SP3. Two. So our feasible region for SP2 is now this area. Okay, so the, the area is not that this part of the triangle is not longer included in your feasible region. Your feasible region is now this area. Okay? So for F SP2 now you need to find the optimal solution. So what do you do? You again follow the same process. You know that direction of improvement is that way. So you use your plane and you move that perpendicular to your um, to that direction and you will find out that the optimal solution will be this point. Or you can also test each point individually and you will find out that this is the optimal solution. For this problem, it's very easy to see which number or the coordinates for that point. Because this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So in that case, this number corresponds to 4 and 1 half. Okay, so for SP2, your optimal solution is x 
x1 equals 4 and x2 equals 1 half. You plug those numbers into your objective function, then the optimal solution would be 29.5. Are we done? No, we are not done because we still have the fractional value for our solution. So we need to branch again for this problem. Um, when, you're, when you're branching, mm -hmm. do you switch into x1, x2, or do you switch with that you do with whichever one the fractional value is? The one that is a fractional value. Right. So if, for any case you end up with two fractional values, then you choose any of the two for branching. Okay, there's no particular order. In this case, we only have one, so you have to branch on that fractional value. So x2 equals one half, so that means that you're going to add two new constraints. Anyone knows the constraints that you need to add? Zero and one. Okay, so x2 less than or equal to zero, x2 greater or equal to one. So now we are not using the x1 basis. We are now adding constraints in the x2 basis. So let's look at that problem now. So we're going to add x2 less than or equal to zero, x2 is greater or equal to one. So this is Put that numbers again. So this is hmm. Then I place those hmm. shouldn't be there. Okay, so we have those two constraints. Those are the ones you see in green right now. So x2 better or equal to 1. So it's this constraint going up. x0 goes down from less than or equal to 0. x2 less than or equal to 0. So one of the questions um, I got was that this is, there's no area here. So that makes the problem invisible? No. The reason why is even though this is a line, since zero is included, it's still an area. So you can find an optimal solution in, on that line. Okay? If, so that's the case. And that, that will always be the case because you're going to have less than or equal. So if the line includes zero, then that line is your visible region. So, now we have two additional problems. We have one corresponding to this area, and one for the line. And we need to find the optimal solution for one of them, so let's start with this one. Actually, I will start with this one, so let's start with, the, with this one. So if you find the optimal solution for this problem, the optimal will be in this corner. And the solution is x1 equals 4, x2 equals 0. And that is an inner solution. So you have a candidate for your problem. You have an inner solution already for your problem. Now, you can move to the second area, and if you find the optimal solution for that one, that will be this point right here. But what happened? By looking at the graph, you know
that is a refractional value. Okay? So I know it's hard to tell at that point what will be that <coughs> fractional value, but if you substitute a number close to that number, let's say 3.1 or 3.2, you'll you'll find out that the optimal solution will be less than 28. Okay? So that makes that solution a, this, that makes this solution a better solution, and that is your optimal solution for your problem. Okay? So the optimal solution is right here, x1 equals 4, x2 equals 0. Any questions? Are you able to get the same answer? Interesting. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. What was the most challenging part for solving the problem? Right. Realizing that the solution Okay. So realizing that this is also a basic origin. Okay. What else? You know, it, it throws me off sometimes when the line comes across. Oh, okay. So initially, when you solve that constraints over the, the first one, then... And I guess you still would have to say more than normally across it. Okay. Act the same way. That's, that's a good point. So you were, you were thinking that you were doing something wrong from, from the beginning. Okay. <laughs> and then you know that the that it could solve first to the next zero. I Okay. So I will I will assign you let's say one or two problems related to this for you to practice. <coughs> and I will make sure if I ask you something like this in the exam, you will be able to see if it is a fractional value it will be a point five. So you can easily see that. It is a fractional number that you can um, get from the graph. Okay, so I don't want to make things too complicated on that sense. Any any other difficulty? So I'll make sure that next time, maybe for, for, for the exam, those lines cross so you don't get confused and also get those numbers easy from the graph. Any, any other questions or concerns? So you can see that even though you're able to get an optimal solution, it's not an integer value, so you get to get to this procedure in order to, to get that integer solution. And that is very important for some applications that we already discussed in class. Okay, so sometimes you're not going to be able to just get that linear program solution and make your recommendations. You also need to make sure that you satisfy that constraint for integer solutions. Okay, so that basically concludes our lecture in integer programming. <coughs>